After record-breaking heavy rainfalls this summer, several pictures of landslides hit the front pages of Korean newspapers. There were images of broken solar panels and fallen trees scattered all around. The pictures were used as fuel for the skeptics of solar energy. They argue that solar energy is not feasible in Korea. But there was a counter-argument that the landslide damaged only 0.1% of Korea's total solar panel facilities. They criticized the skeptics of renewable energy for intentionally exaggerating the downsides of solar energy. The debate about the pros and cons of solar energy has intensified recently as the current administration pushes to phase out nuclear power. Those who support solar energy say that we should urgently transfer to renewable energy to deal with the climate crisis. They also say solar power is going to become more economical as the unit cost for electricity will eventually go down as technology evolves. Opponents say solar energy is neither economical nor pro-environmental. As we've seen in the summer's floods, damaged solar panels can hurt the natural environment. Also, disposal of used panels creates a lot of toxic waste. Depending on renewable energy will run up electricity bills, they also say. Heavy rainfalls in the summer are inevitable, so we are likely to see landslide cases almost every year. But people don't want to see the unproductive political argument about the pros and cons of solar energy. What the Korean public wants is the truth of the matter, the truth about the safety and the economics of solar energy. Geographically, Korea is not the best place for solar farms. The latitude is too high, there are too many mountains, and the weather is not conducive to extracting a lot of power from the sun. So at first I said geographically, Korea is not the best for solar farms. So we say geographically, we're talking about uh, where something is, where a country is, or a place is, and then describing the terrain. So is it a desert? Is it mountainous? Is it, ju is it a jungle? That's geographically. Um, and I said it's not a best place for solar farms. So uh, when you see a lot of solar panels in one area, we call that a solar farm. So if they're building new solar farms, that means they've designated an area to install the solar panels. And I said the latitude is too high. So the latitude are the way we measure um, our location in the Earth. So longitude and latitude. Latitude goes from east to west. So for example, the DMZ is at the 38th parallel. So that's the latitude line of 38. In Korea, the latitude is too high means it, the country is too far north, means which we get less sunlight during most of the year. So if it was around the equator in the middle, that means it would be a very good place because the latitude would be low. And then finally I said, the weather is not conducive to extracting a lot of power from the sun. So if something's not conducive, that means it's not helping something and it's not a proper fit. So the weather in Korea, for example, the summer we've had like 60 days of cloud cover in two and a half months. So if it's too cloudy, that means the solar farms cannot get the power from the sun. So it's not conducive from getting the power from the sun. But if we lived in a desert where it was sunny all the time, that would be conducive to solar power. Korea's location, rough terrain, and unpredictable weather puts the country at a disadvantage when using solar power. So I said this, these conditions put the country at a disadvantage uh, when using solar power. So if you are at a disadvantage, it means that you might not succeed in something or you might not get a job or you might not win at something. So for example, if you don't have a college education, you're at a disadvantage of finding a job. But in this case that, you know, the weather in Korea is so crazy that it puts the country at a disadvantage because we would not get the full amount of energy we need from the sun. Making and getting rid of solar panels pollutes the environment with heavy metals. Also clearing plants and trees and animals to make a solar farm has negative effects on the environment. These factors make solar panels less green. Uh, so I talked about that when you make solar panels or dispose of them, you have to deal with what we call heavy metals. So you might think of heavy metal as the music, but heavy metals 
plural, uh, are metals that are, or elements in the environment that are bad for your health and can cause disease and cancer. So like lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic, chromium, these are all uh, elements, but if they get into the water or if you eat them, it could be, it can make you really sick. And I said, also clearing plants, trees, and animals. So when we talk about clearing, you might use it for like clearing the table or clearing your schedule. But we talk about when we take a huge area of land and get rid of all the trees, you have to clear it. So clearing the land before you build a building. And then finally, I said, these factors make solar panels less green. So um, when we talk about being green, it's being friendly to the environment. So for example, if you want to be more green, you would turn off your computer at work at night. You would l use less water. Uh, you would also try to recycle more. That's being more green. But since these solar panels, they do provide energy, but they have all these like dangerous chemicals of them, in them, that makes them less green compared to hydro, electric power, or wind power. Old solar panels create toxic chemical contamination in the soil and eventually the water. Disrupting natural habitats of wildlife, flora and fauna goes against the idea of being eco-friendly. This ranks solar panels lower on the scale of green technologies. So in this sentence, I said disrupting the natural habitats of wildlife, meaning animals, but flora and fauna. Flora and fauna means the plants and trees of a specific area. So, you know, if you go to one area, it might be a lot of pine trees, that's the flora and fauna. In other areas, you might have like rice fields, but also trees, that also includes flora and fauna. Um, and I said, it goes against the idea of being eco-friendly. Uh, so many Koreans pronounce eco-friendly, they say echo-friendly. Uh, echo is not the correct pronunciation, we say eco. So eco-friendly means that it's environmentally safe, it saves energy, it's a green technology. And in the final sentence I said, this ranks solar panels lower on the scale of green technologies. So to rank something lower or higher on a scale means you are ranking something from highest to lowest, biggest to smallest. So in this case, you know, it's that if the solar panels are destroying environments and have heavy metals inside of them, it will rank lower on the scale. So if something's cleaner, that would be wind energy or hydroelectric energy. Solar panels would go lower on the ranking. There's no stopping the alternative energy train due to climate change. The move to clean energy is inevitable. So I said, there's no stopping the alternative energy train. So uh, when we talk about a train, that means that like it's a very popular trend or movement or industry that's it keeps growing, getting bigger, and going faster. So like the train, like to stop a train would be almost impossible. So since there's such a high demand for more green technology, everyone knows about it. It's like a big moving train. So the industry itself is like a train and there's no stopping it, meaning it will just keep going and keep growing. And I said the alternative energy train. So we talk about green technology. Alternative energy just means something different than the energies we have now. For example, oil, gas, coal, nuclear. Those are all pretty mainstream energies. But alternative energy is like sun, hydroelectric, solar, water, wind, or any sort of new energy. That's what we, we call alternative energy. And I said the move to clean energy is inevitable. Inevitable means it will happen for sure in the future. The creation of new green energy sources is market driven. Because of eco awareness, the demand is higher than ever, which indicates renewable energy is not going away anytime soon. So I said the creation of new green energy, so we talked about this, the solar, the wind, hydroelectric, is market driven. Now, if something or a company is market driven, it means that they take a look at the market and what consumers are doing, and they will adapt and change to the market. So nowadays, a lot of food companies see that people are eating less sugar. So they're trying to make you know snack alternatives with more protein or more fat and less sugar. So those people are market driven. They look at what the consumer is doing and they change their behavior. And I said, because of 
eco-awareness. So um, if you are eco-aware, that means that you are trying to live a more sustainable life and be more concerned about the environment. So you recycle more, you turn off electricity, you try to save water, your behavior changes to help the environment. And then finally, I said, um, the, you know, this, all of this indicates that renewable energy is not going away anytime soon. So we say if something is not going away or not going away anytime soon, it means that this trend will keep going. It's not going to disappear. Uh, we'll still have to focus on renewable energy and um, environmentally friendliness. So that means we're focused on it and it's not just a, a fad and it'll go away. To diversify exports, Korea needs to stay focused on producing solar panels. As time goes on, the price will drop, and it will put Korea in a strategic position to export high-quality panels at a competitive price to bring money into the country. So in the first part of the sentence, I said to diversify exports. Uh, so when you diversify something, you spread out your risk or spread out your investment. So in this case, Korea exports a lot of cars, a lot of cell phones. But if they start producing other new technologies, such as solar panels, that will help spread out their investments in manufacturing, thus creating more jobs and helping the Korean economy. As time goes on, the technology becomes more affordable to manufacture solar panels. An increased demand will provide jobs and attract foreign investment, which will boost the Korean economy. It's a win-win for Korea. Um, so when we talk about a win-win, uh, a win-win situation is when everyone benefits. So in this case, if Korea focuses on building solar panels, uh, they'll create more jobs, which is a win. Uh, they'll create more foreign investment, so more money from abroad will come in. When they sell those solar panels abroad and here, that brings in more revenue for the government. So nobody loses if Korea starts building new technology and exports it. Thanks, guys, and thanks for downloading. Also, thanks for all your help on supporting the Konglish Killer book. I really appreciate it. Talk to you again. Bye-bye.